Hi guys, in today's video I would like to show you this STM32 example that uses RFID module that is capable of reading RFID text and every time it reads its UID which stands for Unique Identifier uh, then every time I convert it to string and send it via Bluetooth Classic and that message is being received by this uh, Android app that I've de developed and this is also a follow-up video so also this example is still capable of turning the LED on or off so all the messages are being received and I am also able to clear the list so like nothing was received now so every time I read and tag, the LED blinks and the message is sent to my Android phone. So in today's video, I would like to show you how you can make also this STM32 project and also a follow-up video to this Android app. So let's get started. So let's start with the hardware. I have used only three modules. One of them was, was this STM32 board, which has STM32F103C8T6 uh, MCU on it. So this is an original one. And uh, beware, there are also clones uh, that, that are marked as CS32 but this won't work for this STM32 Cube ID development uh, environment so I have used uh, one of these genuine one and then I've used uh, one of these HC06 Bluetooth Classic modules uh, which have this web page on them and uh, the genuine logo and then I used uh, one of these RFID modules uh, named as PN532 and uh, these use uh, different peripherals the, uh, these can use uh, I2C, uh, high-speed UART or SPI and for this purpose I have picked up an SPI peripheral that uses these pins on this side so that's all for this hardware and we can move on to uh, this project so let's move to the code as I mentioned a while ago I'm using SPI peripheral for uh, RFID module and uh, let's check the settings I have set it up only up to about 1 megabit per second speed because I'm using quite long cables and it is safer to use lower speed and when it comes to UART, uh, I have enabled global interrupt for this UART to receive all the characters. And I'm using this UART uh, for Bluetooth module and its default baud rate is 9600 bits per second or uh, bouts. And basically I have initialized a few GPIO pins for LED and Bluetooth reset. Uh, I am currently not using this button, but for the future purpose, I have just initialized it. And uh, when it comes to clock, I've uh, set up everything to basically maximum speed. And I'm also using this timer too, which is set up to 20 milliseconds and uh, I have enabled global interrupt and I'm using this uh, timer uh, just to receive uh, UART messages uh, in case uh, so the receiving fails or something uh, I basically run the timer and check uh, how long does it take uh, to receive a message and when it takes too long then I launch uh, the message handler that handles the unreceived messages so uh, that's basically it and let's move on to the code so first I initialize all the peripheral then I wait 200 milliseconds afterwards I 
toggle the reset pin from low value to high value and wait one second, uh, which allows the Bluetooth module to initialize. And then I clear the buffer, start the timer, enable the global interrupt for the UART too. And afterwards I initialize uh, this PN532 RFID module via SPI. And uh, then I try to read the firmware, firmware version. And uh, if it is successful, I go on. But when there's a problem, I just uh, uh, end up uh, in this indefinite loop and uh, let the LED to blink forever. But uh, when it is successful, I just uh, configure this module and uh, then I try to read it in this indefinite loop. And uh, when the reading uh, is successful, when I uh, read some uh, UID from the RFID, uh, then uh, this return value uh, returns some integer. But when there is a problem, it returns minus one. And uh, when uh, the message is uh, like uh, well received, then uh, it returns the number of uh, characters that was that were read. And during this process, uh, I light up the LED, so this uh, reset uh, value of the GPIO pin turns on the LED. And after the whole process, I just uh, turn off the LED, so uh, during this time the LED just blinks because, because it takes a while to process all of this. And uh, I just clear the buffer. Uh, this uh, uh, string is for converting the characters uh, to hexadecimal format or to decimal format. I have uh, used this uh, if def uh, condition uh, that allows me to uh, decide uh, whether you want to convert it to hexadecimal format or to normal decimal format. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, that's the purpose of this uh, if def definition. And uh, Afterwards, uh, I just, after formatting this uh, string, uh, I just uh, added up to my buffer. And uh, after all that conversion, I just uh, add their uh, end of line uh, character. And then I send it uh, to my Bluetooth app or to my Android phone. And uh, after the reading is successful, I just uh, wait one, one second uh, and that's how it goes. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, app, this project is capable of uh, sending and receiving the messages as well as turning the LED on or off. So this message handler uh, does the job. It uh, allows the, to turn the LED on or off, and when it uh, recognizes these uh, messages, it uh, uh, does what it has to do and sends back the response to the Android app. And in case uh, some unknown or inc incorrect message uh, has been received, it uh, sends back uh, that uh, that uh, incorrect message, that uh, that garbage. So that's basically it. And afterwards, I clear the buffer and uh, reset the variables. And uh, in this interrupt code, uh, I have UART interrupt, which uh, receives uh, character by character and uh, writes it uh, to the buffer. And uh, after it contains uh, end of line character, I just launch uh, the message handler. and. Uh, when the receiving uh, uh, starts, uh, then the buffer uh, isn't empty. And when the buffer isn't empty, I just uh, uh, count up every 20 milliseconds. And when the 
receiving takes more than uh, 100 milliseconds i launch uh, the message handler anyway because that's uh, just too long to receive such uh, short messages so that's basically it but when it comes to this uh, library uh, i have found it uh, on the github so this is the origin uh, of this library i have downloaded uh, it out of here so uh, i have found that library in this uh, 7-zip folder so it's basically this one example but uh, i have also uh, slightly modified this uh, library so what i did i've uh, remapped uh, these pins to mine and uh, i have also added their uh, definition so up here you can see another uh, if def definition or uh, this condition for definition and uh, this allows me to uh, turn on or off uh, these uh, functions so i'm not using uh, I square C, so that's why I defined up here uh, this SPI uh, definition, and uh, it enabled only uh, these uh, functions, and the uh, rest of them are turned off. But uh, that's basically the only modification that I've made. So that's basically it, and I'm gonna leave a link. For this library uh, in my youtube video and also on my github page and uh, all these examples are already uploaded on my github so you can go on and check it so uh, i have uh, explained this uh, project example uh, for my stm board in my previous video so you can go on and, and watch it so now I'm going to move on to an Android project. So let's continue with that one. So let's move on to this Android uh, Studio project. So this project is quite similar to my previous Bluetooth Classic Protocol project, but uh, I have added here this list view and manifest uh, it's the same. I'm still using this uh, Bluetooth uh, admin and Bluetooth uh, permission and I have locked uh, these activities to portrait mode so my app doesn't rotate and uh, over here uh, I have this uh, list view uh, over here and I have added uh, there are these three buttons uh, first uh, this button clear clears the conversation uh, adapter so that uh, list view uh, is basically cleared and uh, when i click on button on it sends the command to turn on the led or to turn off the led in this case and over here uh, here's all the receiving uh, happening so when i receive the message i just add packet by packet to my receive buffer and when it contains uh, end of line character uh, afterwards uh, i remove that uh, last character which is end of line character and then i edit to my list view so i just uh, put there received and afterwards the content uh, of receive buffer and then i clear the buffer and when i'm sending something i just uh, uh, put into the conversation adapter uh, sent and then also the content of the message so that's uh, basically it and i of course uh, i just uh, remove uh, this end of line character before that so i'm removing the end of line character every time I'm just adding something to this uh, con conversation array adapter uh, during uh, when I send something or when I receive something. So that's basically it. 
and everything is available on my github so over here uh, here's my new example and if you want to you can go on and watch my previous videos so that's basically it for today's video thank you bye